to invite you to consider your role as a catechist in a slightly different way. There's a bit of a temptation to imagine that you must somehow be a learned professor or a scholar, an expert who can answer every question. But I want you to see the relationship slightly differently. It's not that scholarship is not necessary. It's good to consider, prepare and think through what you're doing. But I want to add another dimension and it goes a little bit like this. I wonder if you've ever been in a scene like this. I get on the tube train at St Pancras, you know, it's a hot day, it's packed, it's, it's sweaty, it's just rush hour and we're all crammed in there and the train goes into the tunnel towards Farringdon and then you get this declaration, it pierces the silence. It's a man, he claps his hands and then he shouts, I have come to tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he moves into a speech. Uh, I hear words uh, around sin and so on. The woman in front of me takes the hand of her child as if to say, it's all right, don't worry. The child looks for comfort from her mother. Next to her stands two Spanish tourists. They're giggling, they're, they're, they're telling each other, I think translating what this man is saying as they hold their city maps. And sitting next to me is a man who pulls up his newspaper in self-defence. Whilst this speech of salvation continues and we pull into the next station, the doors slide, the people change and the voice is gone. And you feel inside the tube a collective sigh of relief. Ah, now we can retreat back into our own worlds uninterrupted. How do you feel when someone shouts at you like that? Well, I have two reactions. On the one hand, here is a man of conviction, of courage, proclaiming the gospel as he understands it. One ought to admire his courage. On the other hand, there's something slightly uncomfortable about it. I felt resentful, almost irritated to be shouted at in that way. And I pondered what the problem was. In his recent exhortation, The Joy of Love, Pope Francis talks about approaches to communicating the gospel in family life. And he talks about what we now call the theology of accompaniment. What does that mean for a catechist? Take a look at Luke chapter 24. It's a story you know well, the journey of the road to, to Emmaus, two disciples, despondent, disillusioned, as so many of us are. We're told that their faces are downcast, they're looking to the floor. Think of the times when you're on a journey looking at the floor. You know, you've lost your joy, you've lost your purpose, you're aimless, you're disappointed. Life didn't give you what you expected. And into that moment, the accompanier. In this story, Jesus, resurrected but unrecognised, walks at their shoulder. A phrase that Pope Francis uses regularly about us catechists, shoulder to shoulder. They walk along the road together, they explain their distress, and Jesus begins to explain their distress to them and the reasons for their joy. And it's only, of course, when they sit down together to eat that they realise that their hearts have been burning and finally they recognise him in the breaking of bread. Back to the tube. What was the problem there? On the one hand, you have to admire his courage, his tenacity, his conviction to communicate the gospel as he understands it. There he was, after all, being a courageous disciple, proclaiming the truth. And yet, 
On the other hand, there was something I didn't like about it, that it intruded, it, it, it was an intrusion. Um, and then pondering this situation, I began to realise what it was that annoyed me. It wasn't in fact the fact that he'd intruded into the tube, it was the fact that he got off. Strange as it sounds, someone who just breaks into our lives, who doesn't know our names, who doesn't want to share our pain, who doesn't want a relationship with us, they can shout the gospel to us if they need to, but it won't connect. In the document, The Joy of Love, Pope Francis suggests another way, that when we're working with families, we accompany them, we walk shoulder to shoulder with them, and we encourage the parents to do likewise with their children. This is not the black and white of a final judgment. It's looking for shades of progress, just one step forward, one step forward towards the Lord, knowing that he will step forward too, that we are walking on a journey. When you're working with these children, don't look for the end result. Look for the next step, the shades of progress. This is the principle of accompaniment. We find it in Luke chapter 24, and we find it in the teachings of our church, that we do not look for the end game but we look for shades of progress. So, less anxiety and more gentle perception about where these children, young people, adults are and where we're going to. The principle of accompaniment. So, here comes the quote, followed by the questions. Take a look.